So you're relocating your family to the Seattle area, but are a little concerned or unsure of exactly where to lay down your roots. I'm going to share with you the best Seattle suburb school districts in the area in no particular order. You'll definitely want to stay tuned for the last one that I bring up because it's, in my opinion, the best school district in the area, hands down. And it's also the best area to buy real estate. My name is Rachel Novak. Um, and I'm a real estate agent in the Pacific Northwest area with the Novak team at Real Brokerage. But today, I'm not just going to be your real estate agent. I'm going to be your local community guide. I'm also a mom to three school-age kids who have attended schools in several different districts in the area while we were figuring out where we wanted to lay down our roots. So I'm going to share with you the inside scoop on exactly what you need to know about the area and what the best Seattle suburb school districts look like. First school district I want to bring up for the best Seattle suburb school districts is the North Shore School District in Bothell. Bothell actually hugs the border between Snohomish and King counties. It actually occupies space in both of those counties. So it's one of the most popular suburbs in the Seattle area. The school district itself is made up of 36 schools, including four high schools, six middle schools, and 20 elementary schools. It serves over 23,000 students in its area. So uh, it's a pretty big area as well as a lot of opportunity, a lot of different schools. And also employs over 2,100 educators. So you've got a pretty decent ratio of educators to students in that particular school district. Bothell itself and the entire school district, the North Shore School District has a really, really diverse demographic. So it speaks just volumes to the Pacific Northwest as we have become a very diverse area to live in. Many, many families have moved to the area due to the schools, um, North Shore School Districts especially. So, you know, there's tons of job opportunities. Um, there's gorgeous scenery and geography, of course. Um, so our kids are growing up in really such a phenomenal, geographically diverse place more than ever before. So there are a few other areas that are super attractive to those moving to the Bothell area besides the schools. So a couple things that I want to share with you. Number one, Blythe Park. If you have not visited Blythe Park in Bothell, Washington, it is literally one of the coolest and most enjoyable places that you can go. It's over 40 acres. It's got large and small picnic shelters that you can rent out for birthday parties or just use for day use. Um, it has a huge play area. It includes barbecue grill area, so you can literally make burgers and dogs um, right during the summertime if you want to. It also includes a 10-hole disc golf course. So if you have never visited the Pacific Northwest before and you do come up here, you will notice that there is a common theme up here that we love our disc golf. It's super random. I know. There's also multiple trails in the Blythe Park that connects up to the Burke Gilman Trail, which is a really, really big and long trail throughout kind of uh, the east, southeast Snohomish County and north uh, east. East King County. So both the Burke Gilman Trail and the Sammamish Trail are connected through Blythe Park. So it's a really incredible area to be able to park. I think there's almost 75 different parking spots. So it's a great place to go, spend an entire day, plan a run, plan some exercise, plan a disc golf afternoon with friends, um, and just have a great, great time. Another area in Bothell people love is downtown. So downtown Bothell kind of has this feel like it's still a small town. So even though, like I mentioned, there's over 20 elementary schools and four high schools, like the population of Bothell is getting pretty big. However, it still maintains that small town vibe because of downtown Bothell. In downtown Bothell, you've got a um, super cool little bakery, one that's called Hillcrest Bakery in particular, that's really, really fun. You've got really cool coffee shops. You've got excellent bookstores. Bothell is really well known for its great bookstores. And you've also got this really cool area called the McMinimins Anderson School. So it sounds kind of weird, but it's essentially this campus that has a hotel, it has a conference center, it has multiple restaurants all on the same campus. So it's a really cool one-stop shop place if you're looking to stay, check out the area, um, go have some good grub, and just enjoy yourself. And the last one, of course, in Bothell especially, is the real estate. Bothell has been one of the biggest appreciating real estate markets in the entirety of the Seattle suburbs. So you've got a, a good mixture of new, large homes with big neighborhoods, beautiful playgrounds, really beautiful homes, but smaller lots. And you've also got multiple neighborhoods that are older or many have been remodeled, really big lots, and just beautiful, beautiful established neighborhoods. All throughout Bothell, both in Snohomish and King counties, you're going to have multiple trails, multiple parks. Bothell is just a beautiful, green, lush neighborhood. 
So if you're looking for kind of a bigger population, but a small town feel, as well as a fantastic school district in the suburb of Seattle, North Shore School District and living in Bothell is going to be for you. Now, just north of Bothell is the sprawling city of Snohomish. Now, in Snohomish, you're going to find multiple different pockets of neighborhoods, um, as well as lots of properties on acreage. So lots of old farmhouses, barns, horses, um, you know, hobby farms, all these kinds of things. Um, and in, in other areas, you're going to find smaller houses, smaller lots, more neighborhood, tight-knit kind of a feel. So Snohomish really is, it's incredibly sprawling. It goes from Bothell all the way over and abuts the east side of Everett and then all the way up to Lake Stevens. So Snohomish, geographically speaking, has a huge, huge footprint as a really big suburb of Seattle. Now, in the actual school district, um, it's a little more quaint and yet still robust because of the population. But because of the sprawling nature of Snohomish itself, you've got a, quite a bit more small town feel. So you've actually only got nine total elementary schools in Snohomish, which feed into two middle schools, which then feed into two high schools. So the Snohomish School District definitely has, like I mentioned, that small town feel where kids can get attention in class. They can, they can build friendships that will literally take them all the way through their school years, all the way through graduation. But you've got a, a great array of area to be able to choose what kind of real estate that you want to invest in, right? And where you want to land your family, where you want to play to, put down your roots. So um, a couple of other fantastic reasons that people are moving to Snohomish. So a few other fantastic reasons that people are absolutely flocking to Snohomish, besides this just huge geographical area, is historic downtown Snohomish. So if you've looked it up online or you've seen pictures of it before, you kind of have a feeling of what it looks like. Historic downtown Snohomish is the hub of Snohomish culture. It's got multiple shops, retail areas, local goods stores, all of them, most of them locally owned, lots of local goods locally made. You've got just an incredible uh, culture when you walk downtown Snohomish. You've also got some amazing restaurants downtown. Awesome to just take an entire day or afternoon or evening, go stroll down historic Snohomish downtown and go in and out, pop in and out of the shops, pop in and out of the restaurants, some incredible options down there. Another big reason that people are loving living in Snohomish is Bickford Station. So at Bickford Station, it's kind of, again, like a one-stop shop for people locally and flocking from other areas to come to it because it's got huge national retailers like Home Depot, Kohl's, and Fred Meyer. So you're able to literally go shop for the home, shop for your grocery, shop for your clothing, for the whole family in one stop. But in Bickford Station, it also has cool uh, things like uh, taekwondo for the kids. It's got spark hot yoga for mom or dad. It's got um, a huge gym in the actual square of Bickford Station. So again, you can stop in, go hit a yoga class, go over shopping, and then go grab coffee on the way home. It's got coffee shops like Starbucks, some local coffee shops, as well as multiple restaurants, including QSR, which we consider like quick service, like order at the counter and collect and walk out, as well as a couple of sit down places like the Outback Steakhouse. So it's got some really, really great options. The real estate in Snohomish, like I mentioned before, is super diverse. So if you're looking for an acreage property with a big home on it, or if you're looking for an older classic farmhouse, um, or if you're looking for something just small, quaint, simple in town, Snohomish has a huge array of relatively affordable homes in that area. They can range anywhere from the mid 500s for a smaller home all the way up into the 2 million range, uh, depending on the property that you're looking for. So good to know. Next, we've got the Everett School District. Now, this has been one that's really turned around over the last 10 years because Everett, especially North Everett, didn't have a super great reputation. But as more people are moving to the area, it's appreciating the real estate and they're starting to utilize their tax dollars better than ever before. So the infrastructure of Everett itself is improving and the large employers in Everett are drawing high dollar employees um, as well as creating more high dollar jobs. So it's really an up and coming area, continuing to appreciate, continuing to bring people in. And this is something that you can see affecting the schools specifically. Uh, the Everett School District also includes areas called Silver Firs, which is on the eastern side of Everett towards Snohomish, and Mill Creek, which is on the southern end of Everett, okay, uh, that borders Bothell. Now, Mill Creek is a little bit of a higher end community with a reputable golf course, its own incredible town center, 
but we're going to stick to the Everett School District mostly today on that one, okay? Uh, the schools in Everett actually cover a really large area as well. So you'll notice a theme in a, in a lot of these school districts that they blend into each other quite a bit. Um, however, in the Seattle suburbs, the cool thing about Seattle and the Pacific Northwest is that you can get almost anywhere in 20 to 25 minutes. So everything is relatively close. It's a pretty dense area, yet you've got a ton of nature, a ton of built-in trails and parks and things that you can really enjoy. So the schools in Everett, they have over 22,000 students that they serve with over 2,500 educators on staff. Okay, This includes 18 elementary schools, five middle schools, and four high schools. Everett now has, and this is a huge statistic, especially for the Everett School District, they have a 93% graduation rate, which has greatly improved over the last 10 or 15 years. So it's a really, they've really been intentional about building it, bringing in great educators, and maintaining a really good environment for our students. A few other notable areas in Everett that I wanted to, to bring up to you, because if you look at it on a map, Everett is really big. And so there's a couple of things that I want to point out that have become even better over the last 10 or 15 years. Okay, Now, number one is the North Everett neighborhoods. Along Grand Avenue, You'll, if you look at this on a map or if you see it, if you drive it, along Grand Avenue, you will see some of the most beautiful, large typical American four square homes, most of which have been beautifully remodeled. Um, the scenery is beautiful. The sound views are drop out on some sides of the street. Um, so it's really such a beautiful, incredible place to live. It just, you drive down the street and it feels like home, right? So it's a great, great, great place to lay down roots. Up also in North Everett, um, is Providence Hospital. This has been one that I have personally seen turn around over the last 15 years into such an incredible employer and such an incredible value add for our area. Um, they've been offering huge employment opportunities to those in the medical field, and they've attracted some big talent, not just a Providence, but Providence also has an offshoot that's the Women's Pavilion and Midwifery Center. So for families, this is a huge draw because there are more and more people that are looking to go the traditional route of utilizing a midwife um, as opposed to using uh, a, tr you know, a doctor, right, a Western medicine doctor. And so that while we've got the best of both worlds here at Providence and the Women's Pavilion, it's been a really incredible opportunity for families to come in and feel like they're getting that care that they really, really want. Um, I actually have a personal friend, Mike and I do, have a personal friend that has been working as a traveling surgeon for years. So all through the pandemic, all through this time, he was traveling in all sorts, all over the country. And he actually chose to put down roots here in Everett at Providence Hospital because of the scenery, because of the job opportunities, and he's absolutely loving it. Okay, the last thing that people are loving about Everett, and especially the school district, people with kids, people with families, is the park scene. So one notable park that I have to bring up, of course, is Legion Park. So Legion Park is in North Everett. It overlooks Port Gardner Bay is what it's, it's called, which is really part of the sound, right? The Pacific Northwest, the sound. Um, but people love hanging out at Legion Park, not just for the views, but also for the absolute gorgeous scenery, also for the mild climate of the Pacific Northwest, right? Um, like I mentioned, it overlooks Port Gardner Bay. Uh, you can also see Whidbey and Camino Islands, which is super, super fun, super, super great to be able to just hang out and look over and, oh my gosh, there's some islands. Um, you can also enjoy things like uh, there's a baseball field, there are basketball courts, there are pickleball courts. Uh, there's actually an arboretum that you can go and enjoy if it is sprinkling outside, which it does half of the year here. Um, it's got a viewpoint. It's got walking, running trails, um, awesome areas to, to bring your pets, to bring your dogs. And of course, it has a playground, picnic tables, and a couple of shelters that you can utilize for birthday parties and that kinds of thing. So Legion Park is just an incredible place to spend an afternoon. It's, an inc it's walkable from most areas in North Everett, right off Marine Drive. So what a great place to spend an entire afternoon. Now, if you head just west and just south of Everett, a Seattle suburb just north of Seattle by only 20 minutes, you will find Mukilteo. Now, a lot of people are going to look at this word and say, well, how do you even say that? It's Mukilteo. Um, it's an incredible waterfront city that hugs the coast of western Washington um, from Everett all the way down to Edmonds. Uh, the school district of Mukilteo is one of the highest rated in the state. It serves a very diverse population of over 15,000 students. Um, and includes in that district parts of South Everett, Linwood, and Edmonds. So even though your address may say Edmonds or Linwood or Everett, 
it is possible you're within the boundaries of the Mukilteo School District. All of those areas, like I said, feed into the Mukilteo School District. And almost a quarter of the students that attend the Mukilteo School District are actually English language learners. It's honestly a fantastic environment for diversity and for learning. You know, my actually my two older kids, Mike and I's two oldest kids, started their school careers at the, an elementary school in the Mukilteo School District, and they had a fantastic experience. This was before we were finding, we found our forever home, right? But in this time, we actually were living in South Everett. We were assigned to the Mukilteo School District, and it was a great experience. We loved each of the teachers that my kids got to have for the couple of years they were there, as well as the principal there elementary school, there's just a really high level of care. So Muckleteo is a, is a great, great school district. In the district itself, there are 13 elementary schools that feed into four different middle schools, and then all those converge into two high schools. So again, when we're talking the numbers of students, like I had mentioned about Bothell and Everett, for instance, there were only tw over 22,000 students in feeding into two or three or four high schools and there's only like 15,000 in this one so this one has a pretty great ratio in regards to educators versus students so your kids are really going to be able to get that customized approach and customized attention in the classroom in the Muckleteo School District okay and there's obviously being a west coast you know coastal town Muckleteo has some incredible opportunities and huge reasons why people and families are flocking to live there um, not just because of the schools. Um, there's obviously the geography, right? The location's fantastic. The sound views are phenomenal. And of course, the diverse population are excellent for transplants or right? for you people that are coming into the, t into the city um, from out of state, right? It's a great place to labor to and build a family. But little known things that are awesome about Muckleteo. Number one, the Muckleteo Ferry and Waterfront Area. So the Muckleteo ha has a ferry going right from the waterfront on Muckleteo over to Clinton on Whidbey Island. It's only a 20-minute ferry ride, um, but it's an incredible, fun afternoon on the ferry, being able to see all these sites, being able to look all over the sound and uh, go over and see Whidbey Island for a day. Um, down by the waterfront, kind of where the ferry picks you up, um, enjoy multiple restaurants, one especially called Ivers, it's fantastic, a brewery called Diamond Knot, as well as multiple little local stores and retail spaces while you're waiting for the ferry to come pick you up. This ferry, right, going from Muckleteo over to Clinton to Whidbey Island, I, I have read that it is considered one of the top thousand crossings in the entire world just because of interest from passengers. It's interesting. It's beautiful. It's quick enough to feel like it's efficient but it's long enough to actually enjoy. We actually have quite a few people that live on Whidbey Island that commute over the ferry to the mainland every single day for work because the uh, cost of living in Whidbey is quite a bit lower. However, if you're a mainland liver and you want to be um, you know, sending your, your kids to the schools over here on the mainland, Muckleteo is definitely the place to be doing that. The other big one that I want to talk about um, in Muckleteo especially, and one thing that our county in north of Seattle is known for, is of course Boeing. Now, Muckleteo, kind of South Everett area, is home to one of the largest factories in the plant of Boeing um, in the entire airline industry, right? Um, it employs over 60,000 people here in Washington state. That accounts for over almost 40% of the entire Boeing workforce. So you can imagine that having that kind of presence in this area, uh, the amount of job security that it provides. Uh, there's manufacturing jobs, engineering jobs, data science and analytics, lots of cybersecurity now, of course, and obviously global business careers that you can have in this plant. Um, I know personally a significant amount of our clients as well as a significant amount of our friends work at Boeing. Um, everywhere from, you know, low man on the totem pole doing just mechanics all the way up to executives brokering millions of dollar deals selling big airplanes to other airlines globally. It's pretty cool. Um, they offer tours of Boeing also, which is super fun, especially if you're new to the area. Go visit the Museum of Flight um, as well as do a Boeing factory tour. It's super, super cool to go see. The last thing that I want to bring up about Muckleteo, of course, is the real estate. You guys, the entire Muckleteo area has such a diverse population, and it also has a very diverse portfolio of real estate opportunities. Uh, you've got grand waterfront properties with dropout views of the sound, um, all the way to affordable condos in smaller communities, and of course, way more than that, obviously. 
Um, it's got an array of options for all price points, really depending on what you're looking for. So Muckle 2 is a great place to get into. If all you can afford moving to Washington is a condo in Muckle 2 for now, get in there. Build that appreciation. This area is continuing to grow every single day, every single year. So get in, get into a condo or a small home and work your way up over the years if you want to stay. But being able to have such a diverse population and a diverse portfolio of real estate is a huge win for people moving to the Muckle 2 area. Last but not least, I told you to wait for this one, so I hope you are still with me. Uh, the final best Seattle suburb school district, in my opinion, that I'm going to share with you today is the popular Lake Stevens School District. Now, just northeast of Everett, you'll find popular Lake Stevens. It's across the infamous trestle, and you'll basically feel like you just drove into a city you didn't even know existed the second that you get there. Um, it has one of the top school districts in the entire area, the entire suburbs of Seattle, in terms of test scores and student achievement. And so Lake Stevens has grown so incredibly quickly over the last 10 years that they have really done an incredible job of maintaining, expanding, remodeling, and ground up building some of their schools um, to accommodate this growing uh, population. There's just as people are growing in, obviously more students are entering the schools every single year, and they're doing a great job keeping up as well as attracting top talent for these students. Um, the, the district right now consists of seven elementary schools, two middle schools, one school that's like a mid-high school, so it's eighth and ninth grade, and then it has one high school. So it serves over 9,000 students. And as you can imagine, with that amount of elementary schools funneling in through those middle schools into the high school, um, that much expansion has really created an opportunity for educators to be really close, really, um, you know, really connected and, and give a customized approach to every single student that's there. Why Lake Stevens? Okay, so just five or six years ago, again, the newest school that was built in Lake, Lake Stevens School Districts um, was called Stevens Creek. Now, it sits in a little development, just, you know, a, a newer development here in Lake Stevens. Um, and it came out of the gates with just phenomenal accolades, phenomenal reviews. Um, they were able to attract some incredible people, incredible educators to the school because of the newness and the excitement and the size with which it is, right? So my kids actually, as I had mentioned earlier in the video, my kids went to a school, a couple of, uh, one of the elementary schools in the Muckleteal School District for a couple of years. We then moved to Lake Stevens, and my kids got to experience Lake Stevens School District and this school in particular. And so I firsthand have experienced how great this school is, how phenomenal the teachers are, and how much the district really cares about its students. As well as uh, the brand new school, they've done a great job of expanding. So the high school in particular, obviously with all these students funneling into one high school, that's, that school's got to have some capacity. So they just finished up a huge remodel and new construction project of the high school expanding it. So uh, they updated the northwest, the northeast, and the north halls of Lake Stevens High School. Basically, they got a huge facelift. So they did all new uh, cosmetics inside, paint and carpet and ceiling tiles and lights, and um, including new desks and new cabinetry and um, sinks, and just updated everything on the inside of these halls to make it even more efficient and even more incredible for students and staff to be able to experience and to upgrade the, their school life, right? Um, they also put in a brand new perimeter fencing with security and safety gates all throughout the school. So that's, I mean, really just making it even more secure for those our high schoolers. So you can be rest assured that if you're coming into this school district and you're going to have a future high schooler or if you have a high schooler now, they're going to feel really safe, really secure, and they're going to be well taken care of the Lake Stevens High School. Um, as well as updating this, the high school and building the new elementary school, they have actually infused a ton of their, their funds and their bond dollars into creating even more safety measures in every single school in the district. So they now have electronic entry where you have to have a card or a key code to be able to get into every single classroom, which has really improved the the safety, right, and the security. So when I send my kids to school, I want to know they're safe. I want to know they're secure, you know, for the seven or eight hours that they're there. And I'm sure you feel the exact same. So Lake Stevens has done a great job of that. One other little fun fact, Lake Stevens School District has fantastic athletic programs. And they just, in the last two years, upgraded both the middle school and the high school football fields, like soccer field, football fields, to all brand new AstroTurf. So it's a really, really nice, beautiful facility that they've built. So when you're going to a Friday night football game or you're going to a spring soccer game, really enjoyable to go and watch. 
the other, of course, uh, parts about Lake Stevens is really just cr that Lake Stevens has infused a lot of dollars, a lot of tax dollars into infrastructure and road maintenance. So Lake Stevens kind of used to be this, I would call it a bottleneck of Snohomish County in a, a, in a suburb of Seattle where people would come up and kind of get stuck because it was there was so much traffic trying to flow through it. They've done an excellent job of creating multiple brand new roundabouts all along Highway 9. And they've really, they've created, a, they've loosened that bottleneck for people to be able to actually come in or go through as efficient as possible, which is great for us busy commuters and busy parents, right? So along with increasing the efficiency of this traffic flow, loosening that bottleneck, um, they're of course, the last one, I'm a real estate agent, so I can't go without talking about the real estate in Lake Stevens. So Lake Stevens is basically comprised of a bunch of incredible, cohesive, family-friendly neighborhoods, um, like Crosswater was is one that's a very, very popular neighborhood in Lake Stevens. It has multiple parks, fantastic homes, very decent-sized lots, and really, really friendly neighbors. Um, lake Stevens is also home to, of course, the actual Lake Stevens. So you've got waterfront properties all along the lake that range anywhere from, you know, just under a million up to three, four, five million dollars, depending on the property. Uh, there are multiple waterfront parks. There are multiple trails. It's just an incredible environment, incredible place to raise kids, raise a family, and partner that with the incredible school district. And you really have a winning area as a great suburb of Seattle. Lake Stevens as a city and all the real estate in Lake Stevens continues to appreciate in value without an end in sight, to be totally honest. So if you're looking for a place to lay down roots and raise a family, you'll find fantastic value in real estate in Lake Stevens. So there you have it. The best Seattle suburbs, school districts, as well as a few other bonus reasons to move to each of the areas that I brought about. Like I mentioned in the beginning, I'm Rachel Novak with the Novak Real Estate Team from Real Brokerage, and me and my team are consistently in the top 1% of real estate agents in Snohomish County, as well as the top 10% nationwide. My contact info is in the summary down below this video, so if you need any help or any suggestions in regards to real estate or where or why to move to the Seattle suburbs, definitely let me know. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram.